So you've got your two bones. First of all, you're going to have your radius on the inside and then your ulna. You can basically shift them all the way down through here. You're basically feeling. And when you get down over here, you're going to have your first row of carpal, row, uh, carpal bones and your second row of carpals, then your metacarpals, and then your phalanges, which form your different joints. So basically, you just want to check at the range of movement, ulna and lateral radial deviation. And you're just going to basically just see how the joints all move. But first of all, let's just go through the anatomy here. You've got your scaphoid bone, then you've got your lunate traquetrum parsiform, and your trapezium trapezoid, and your capitate and hamate, which will be over there. Next thing we're looking at there is a scaphoid bone. That normally happens when a patient falls with an extended hand and it gets quite a hard impact to the area. You've got to be careful of scaphoid fractures. So radial carpal instability, as you know, your radius and ulna, your ulna is your bigger part over here, which joins your elbow joint, and then later on your radius becomes the big one, which forms the first line over here. So sometimes when you have fall or trauma or something like that, there's too much movement over here, so you want to basically solidify that kind of movement. So radial carpal instability, it's a very simple strapping as well. Carl's just going to lose some hair. basically limits all your movement in all four planes.